All right, fellow cryptonauts, welcome back. And today, let's talk about T Rex Miner. It's uh, T Rex, but the site is T Rex Miner. So we're on the same page. I use T Rex Miner. I also use NB Miner. I've used LOL Miner. Uh, I use T-Rex mainly with the NVIDIA cards, and that's also mentioned on their webpage here. And let's go through that real quick. Mining made faster than ever. T-Rex is a simple-to-use and highly optimized cryptocurrency mining software. It utilizes the full potential of modern NVIDIA graphics cards using unique optimization techniques. They also have uh, devoted great attention to stable power consumption. Uh, the benefits, along with only a 1% dev fee, make the uh, T-Rex miner, the product, one of the best publicly available miners. And they put their little tagline that your uh, device is run with T-Rex. Nice, simple, clean website. Uh, the key is NVIDIA graphics cards is what they mainly focus on. I forgot about this. I had a 6600 in one of the rigs along with some nvidia's i go i started up t-rex and going why doesn't this recognize this thing it took me why does it recognize this 6600 amd why and i sat there going wait a minute oh t-rex is the one that only works as nvidia so once i remember that i pulled that card out and said i really just want to use t-rex and go with that uh, so why do i want to use t-rex one plus i liked and i'll show you my setup in a minute is that you get to set the overclock settings inside the batch file for whatever algorithm you're mining. For me, it's ETH hash. And by that, I mean, say you have six GPUs. You can specify which devices in your system you want T-Rex Miner to use by specifying the one unique device ID number. It starts at zero, and you can, uh, I'll show you in a minute, there's a command you run which shows you which devices T-Rex sees and you use that index number, that device ID number to specify and map to the correct, uh, the corresponding overclock settings for you know fan speed, core clock, mem clock, that type of stuff. And we'll go through that in a minute, like I said. Let's get over here. So you got the website. Now the releases. You want to you wanna check now and then when the new releases come out because they come out with uh, new features you may like, especially with most of the GPUs have that low hash rate LHR feature. A lot of the miners now, biggest selling points is that we can crack that or improve the performance and get around that or, you know, all that type of stuff. It's a pro, it's a pro to keep up on the latest T-Rex miner or the latest miners per se, keep up on the release notes and what they promise or what they can deliver based on the GPUs you have on your rig. Uh, let's look at the latest one. It's uh, 024.7. I try, oh, 22 days ago. Oh, good. Usually for a while there, they were pumping new releases out, not just T-Rex. A couple of the miners were pumping out new releases almost every day. It was crazy. And they were chasing that, that elusive LHR beast. But I think they, they're working on taming it, so they're getting there. So let's see, uh, let's look at 0.24.7, which is what I am running. Uh, let's see, some command line arguments don't take precedent, precedence over the values set in a config file. So LHR autotune, step size, okay, they fixed that. Performance degradation introduced in 0.24.6. That's the web UE, the web UE. Monitoring page shows a blank. I, I don't really use the web UE. I just use the actual miner, so I'm not too worried about this stuff. Uh, then they have to say impossible set LHR tune values with decimal point. Okay. UEs are a pain in the butt. As a software guy, GUIs are so obviously forward facing. Everyone sees everyone's your mistakes on the GUI. They don't care about the back end where most of the bulk of the work is produced. You see something wrong. The LH, uh, the, yeah, sorry, the GUI has the almost increased amount of workload because they're nit picks. You know, can you change this? Can you change that font color? Can you make the decimal point work for LHR? You know, it's just so much work with doing GUIs. Uh, what do you say about Hive OS? So in Hive OS, I've used it, but I now do everything manually just because I like control. Everything's in Windows based. I use remote control, Chrome remote connection desktop to connect to all my rigs. And that's how I monitor. And I use Ethermine, which tells me if a rig has gone, a rig or a worker has gone offline. And once I get that email, I go check out 
uh, if I can connect to it on my Chrome remote connection desktop. If I can't, I walk over to the machine and I just restart, recycle the power. And then when it comes back up, if it comes back up, if it comes back up, I can then reconnect using the Google Chrome remote connection desktop and fire off the miners for either CPU and GPU mining. Depends how I have it configured. So here it says Hive OS users. Many of the, uh, many of you complained <laughs> that your hash rate on LHR cards is fluctuating too much compared to the Windows version. The reason is Hive OS, Hive OS sets hash rate dash AVR to 30 for T-Rex causing it to report 30 seconds average hash rate as opposed to one minute average. A uh, temporary solution would be to edit your flight sheet and manually add the hash rate dash AVR 60 to the extra config arguments field. Otherwise, we've been told there will be a high voice release that fixes it permanently. See, so yeah, look how flexible the team is, man. They make it easy for you to go in and change stuff. It's not working to your satisfaction. Boom, there's always a solution. So what you do, I don't know if you guys have done this. Again, I don't know. Some people know this in and out. Some people are new to this world. You just go in and you click on, if you're a Windows guy, click on a zip file, download it, unzip it, and that is it. There's no install script. You just unzip it. You got the EXE. If your uh, browser complains about the zip file, you got to go in and say, show me the download and approve it because they, like, they may think it's like a virus or a hack or something because they see an EXE inside the zip. So you got to be mindful of that. You almost have to say, yes, I want to keep this file. Please download it. Once you download it, I used to use MSI Afterburner and go through and set all the overclock settings. And I'm new to this yet. And I, it, you know, it makes sense. It's kind of interesting how you go in and you tune it in. You know, you're, you're finding this sweet spot on these cards so they don't crash every minute. You want them to be stable. I really have stability over uh, burning these things out and trying to get as much hash at the expense of them crashing and, uh, you know, decreasing the uh, life expectancy of the card. So I tuned them in and things are running stable. Then I found out T-Rex, you can go in to the batch file. Let's see here. I don't even know where I kept my stuff. I always, I'm trying to get consistent. And on this machine, I am not consistent. Oh, I'm horrible. So I just put shortcuts. All right, they give you all these algorithm files. I've been doing nice hash and Ethermine. Nice hash, uh, you know, you can mine ETH hash, but it gets paid in Bitcoin on the uh, nice hash site. And it shows up as a, let me show you, as an unmanaged worker. So I'm not using nice, uh, nice hash to monitor my rigs. I'm not using nice hash to monitor at all. I'm just putting, pointing to their pool, their, uh, Dagger Hashimoto, I think it's called. And we can look at that. All right. Yeah, Dagger, this is this this points you to the uh, nice hash pull for ETH hash, as you can see. And that's all you do. So it'll mine ETH hash. Bop, 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 but it goes to your nice hash wallet and you get Bitcoin, which is nice because then you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about like Ethermine and the, the GUI fee, which I've been, I've been complaining about the high fees of, of Ethereum and just moving your money. It's ridiculous. Uh, you can set your payout limits on Ethermine, but still, does it ever go down to 40? No. Sometimes it gets to 50, but that may be a month down the road. So it, it depends what your, what your, uh, your threshold of pain is for waiting to get your payout. So let's go back to T-Rex Miner. Some things to note. I've added some li a line here just for my own sanity. I like to know. I like to know exactly what's going on in my system when I'm running this stuff by hand. First line is T-Rex. I show you my directory. I, I, I hard code the path because when you run it as um, admin, sometimes on some of these miners, it has to go search for the binary. And I just say, here it is. I just hard code the, the path to the uh, EXE. Uh, let's see, the T-Rex, if you look at the readme file, it gives you all the args. And in there, you learn a lot when you read the manuals. It's, it's really amazing. They have a dash dash, devices dash, info. And what that does, it'll echo out every GPU it sees 
on the system as almost as if you're going to the uh, devices manager on windows and looking at display adapters and it gives you a number in front of it zero and up zero one two three four five that's mine i have six so zero to five so then you know which id matches which card it echoes the name out 3060 66 whatever 3060 1660 3070 3080 whatever it says zero is this and that what you can do then you go in you set your ether mine crap you set your wallet address and there's my wallet address if you want to give me some send me some ethereum please do i'll be able to feed my dog and he will be fat and happy so here we go the first one, oh, I forgot about the power. T-Rex lets you set the overclock settings in line in the batch file. I love this because, like I said, I do not have to run MSI Afterburner, which is one less thing for me to worry about. And I read, it never happened to me, but I read sometimes have MSI Afterburner could crash on you, and then your cards are kind of left dangling out there. There's nothing to keep them tuned in i have not seen this personally it's just something i read so that was just something in the back of my mind if if i could remove the option of that happening the possibility i prefer it then it comes t-rex which allows you to put your settings in line it made me happy so first one the p1 is your power settings and again you got zero one two three four five six right these all map to the location of the device zero one two three four and five and it repeats. That's the power settings. Those are what you put in your MSI afterburner if you were just using MSI afterburn. I chose to put them in the bat file. Fan settings. I don't know. I just run them with these. I should run them hotter. I mean, higher. But the temperatures are fine, so I just put them at 85. It's whatever, whatever. I should probably, you know, put them higher. Core clock. Again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those are my core clock settings. And then we got the memory clock. See how it's broken out? They make it nice and simple. And there's an intensity level. And I just put that. That was my sweet spot. If I went higher, I think it... My setup didn't like it. And I would kind of crash. So I did the 18. It was a sweet spot for me. Things run consistently for a week and two. Whatever. I just have no issues. Uh, these settings are device ID location specific. So if you change cards out or add cards... These locations may change, and therefore that is why that is why I do the device's info so it echoes out what the system, what T-Rex thinks is out there and what it can see. So say you have a AMD card sitting out there. It may, I don't think it echoes it. I think it skips it. It just doesn't show it. It might show it in red. Oh, I have to remember that. I'm sorry, guys. It won't, it won't process it. But say you had six uh, NVIDIA cards and you, rem uh, you remove one, you're going to have, and if you don't change this file and you still have six parameters, it's going to complain and say this does not align with that. So the thing with doing this is the number of devices you're mining with that are NVIDIA have to map to these settings for the power level, the core level, the core clock, and the, the memory clock. Just those three, uh, four things. We got, like I said, power, fan, core clock, mem clock and then you just let it rip kablamo you can see over here there's my setup you see the device number gp0 up to five and that's what you see with the devices info it tells you exactly what's out there running there's my hash there's my power not terrible again i'm no expert at this i'm no expert by any any imagine any stretch of the imagination i'm learning as i go i could learn more but all i know is it's working i'm producing uh ethash on ethermine.org or com whatever it is and uh it's working for me yeah ethermine.org there i should get these right and uh what's nice about t-rex is they do their best to address the lhr issue right there they recognize on these two cards the 3060 ti which is lhr and there's a 3060 version 2 which is lhr the t-rex miner does its best to go out there and squeeze the most out of that card get around that you know get around that low hash rate thing and just give you the most hash it can uh for your <laughs> for your enjoyment pleasure i don't know what to say it just does its best to optimize the card based on what they give you on this lhr stuff all right 15 minutes in that's more than enough information i always speak too much but i hope this helps 
This shows you why I use T-Rex. There's probably better things out there. I'm not using Hive OS. I'm not using Awesome Miner. Again, I do it all by hand yet. And I have the time, I have the resources, and it's not terrible yet because things are stable. And I showed in my other video how I let ethermine.org notify me if one of these workers goes down. And then I reset accordingly and I try to troubleshoot. And that's where I'm at. That's where I'm running. And uh, I connect in using Google Chrome Remote Connection. And I'm good to go. And I just like, I feel I have more control right now over this. And I'm not paying any fees. I am a cheapskate. It's bad enough you pay taxes on this stuff for crypto mining. I don't want to pay extra fees. I'm paying fees in the mining software, but I don't want it to pay Hive OS fees. Not at this point. I think if I get more equipment, I can see using Hive OS to manage. Makes sense? That's where I'm at. You guys may have different opinion, but that's the way I feel. All right, guys, I'm out. I am going to go eat and find a dog, take him out. Where are you, Rocco? Oh, he's right there. Hey, Rocco. All right, guys, take care.